many of y'all can say the same thing, but I also is here too. I know the Bible is right. I know the Bible is right. and praise for waking us up another day. Amen. For those of us who woke up this morning, <clears throat> maybe some of us, maybe because of our schedules, we woke up in the afternoon or evening. Amen. We thank the Lord Jesus Christ for his amen grace and his mercy. Amen. They are renewed day by day. Amen. And we thank God for, amen, allowing us to be gathered together in his name <clears throat> once again amen 
We thank the Lord Jesus Christ for his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Amen. The, the Lord Almighty. Amen. As the Bible says, the Lord from heaven. Amen. He came down. Amen. From heaven to earth. Amen. Through the Virgin Mary. And wrapped his spirit in human flesh and blood in order to redeem us from our sins. He became the Savior of the world. Amen. So we thank the Lord Jesus for his sacrifice. That's something he didn't have to do. Amen. He didn't have to, amen, come down, amen, and <clears throat> leave the throne where he was sitting on, amen, and humbled himself, amen, to put on flesh and blood, amen, to call his son, amen, and to grow up in this, amen, as a natural man, amen, in this evil world to save us, amen, praise God, because he loves us so much, amen, that's why he did it, amen, he grew up, amen, as a natural man, even though at the same time he was the almighty God that knew all things and neither had beginning of days nor the end of life, as the Bible says, so that's, amen, God is eternal, amen, God is a spirit, but in order to shed blood, amen, for the sins of the world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's when the Lord God Almighty, amen, became the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, to become the mediator for us. Amen. That's why the Bible says there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> because God. God, amen, in this pure form is a spirit. So, of course, a spirit, you know, can't shed blood. A spirit can't die, cannot die. Amen. So that's why he had to put on, amen, flesh and blood through the man Christ Jesus in order to die for us. Amen. That's why the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Of course, we you know that verse, amen, John chapter 3, verse 16. Even though, amen, the false prophets and everyone else that's misguided, you know, quoted out of context, amen, with a totally warped understanding, amen, other than, praise God, the way it's supposed to be understood, amen, rightly divided and fitly spoken, praise God. So, you know, if you... You know, Jesus, as the scripture has said, you're going to obey what his word tells you to do. Amen. False prophet tell you all you have to do is just repeat some sinner's prayer and instantly you're saved. No, that's not what the Bible teaches us in terms of what must, what one must do in order to be saved. Amen. <clears throat> in order for one to be saved, they have to be born again of the water and of the spirit in order to enter into the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus, amen, spoke of in John chapter 3. And then, of course, amen, he expounded it, amen, through Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 2, amen, on the day of Pentecost, amen, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, amen. Peter stood up with the other holy apostles, amen, preaching, amen, repentance, Remission of sins in Jesus Christ's name and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is the only way that a man or a woman, amen, must be saved. Amen. Under this new testament, a new covenant of grace. Amen. There is no way around Acts 238. Praise God. It doesn't matter what your church dogma teach, amen, or what so-called church you go to. Amen. They're all false. Amen. If they're preaching or teaching against, amen, Acts 238 salvation, amen, you're in a false church. Amen. A synagogue of Satan and your so-called pastor or whoever he is is just another blind guy. And the Lord said if the blind the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Amen. So the false prophet Amen. He's going to burn in the lake along with his blind followers. Amen. If they keep following him, amen, until they enter into judgment, 
until God require their soul. Amen. But the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's something that, amen, most, most Christians, amen, either do not understand or they do not want to have no part of repentance. Amen. That's one of the steps, amen, of becoming a Christian. You have to first repent, amen. If you believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning what he did, amen, concerning his death, amen, he died on the cross at Calvary, amen, willingly, something that the Lord Jesus did not have to do, but he did it, amen, because he knew without the shedding of his blood, there will be no remission of sins for the world. Amen. In order for you and I to have our sins washed away. Amen. The Lord understood. Amen. That the blood of sheep and bulls and goats would never have the power to take away sin. Amen. Speaking of the old covenant law of Moses. Amen. The old covenant or the law of Moses was a type and a shadow of the things to come. Amen. So when the Lord Jesus came down from heaven onto earth, amen, praise God, that he was the body, amen, of that shadow, praise God, amen. Jesus said, I came not to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. And that's, that's what he did. He fulfilled, amen, the law of Moses, amen, on the cross, amen. And he did it willingly, amen. So he died on the cross willingly. So repentance is a type of death. Amen. You have to die willingly to sin. Amen. One day I had to die willingly to sin. Amen. Had to give up. Amen. Those things that was against God's word. Amen. Because <clears throat> Jesus said, except ye repent, shall all likewise perish. There's no way that one can be a Christian. Amen. And still be an alcoholic. Amen. Still getting drunk and, amen, getting your drink on or whatever. You may not be a dry drunk. You're probably a drug head. You probably like to, amen, get high on drugs. Amen. That's still a state of drunkenness. Amen. And the Bible lets us know that no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So you can't be a Christian and still like to get drunk and high and partying, amen, and fornicating, amen, and, and watching filthiness on TV, amen, with the pornography and everything. There's no way you could be a Christian, amen, and you participating, amen, in those evil things. That is something that you have to stop. That is something that you have to repent or turn from in order to be saved, amen. And if you want to be saved, I tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is a savior, Amen. He is able to save. He is able to deliver you from the power of darkness. Amen. And translate you into the kingdom of his dear self. Amen. Bring you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Amen. So that's who Jesus Christ is. He is a savior. Amen. He died on the cross so we can still, amen, be bound by the devil and yet, amen, hypocrite like we are somehow, amen, Christians. No. Amen. He died on the cross. Amen. Was buried and rose again on the third day so we can be delivered. Amen. So we can experience life and that more abundantly. We can experience, amen, true salvation because that's what salvation means. That is the definition of salvation. The definition of salvation, according to the Holy Scriptures that we know as the Holy Bible, is to be delivered from the power of sin. Amen. When you are delivered from something, you do not go back to it. Amen. Praise God. God, the Lord Jesus Christ is a deliverer. Amen. It is nothing too hard for God to take out of your life. But you have to willingly, amen, decide for yourself that your soul is more important than Enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. You have to decide for yourself. Amen. That it is more important. Amen. To live my life for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I can one day avoid a burden in hell. Amen. And see the Lord Jesus face in peace. and Amen. And enjoy the paradise of heaven. 
amen, and being with the other saints, amen, and receiving a glorified, resurrected body, amen, being part of that first resurrection, amen, because the first resurrection is the resurrection of the just or the resurrection of the holy, amen. You have to decide that, amen, heaven, amen, and escaping the wrath to come is more important than what little thrill you can get, amen, messing with someone else's husband or someone else's wife, amen, or messing with someone who's not married, amen, having sexual relations with someone you're not married to, committing fornication, amen. The Bible says marriage is honorable and all in the bed undefiled for whoremongers and adulterers God will judge, amen. I used to be a fornicator before God delivered me. Amen. But I desired to be delivered. One day, I made up my mind, amen, that fornication, amen, was not worth me losing my soul. Amen. Going to the club and shaking it up and, amen, trying to come on with whoever and whatever, amen, praise God, was not important, was not more important than my eternal soul. Amen. Because one day your eternal soul is going to spend eternity somewhere. The choice you make, the life you live, and the God you serve, it will determine where your soul spends eternity. If you continue to choose to serve the devil, amen, through filling the lust of your flesh, basically what you're doing already, some of you, amen, whether you're a church goer or not. Amen. If you haven't been delivered, amen, you are in sin doing what you want to do, whether you're a liar, or, amen, a cheater, a fornicator, amen, or praise God, having hatred in your heart towards people because whatever the case, amen, maybe your upbringing, amen, what you've been taught, what you've been indoctrinated by your family and relatives to hate a certain group of people because of the way they look, amen, or the way they talk, amen, or the way they dress. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, that hatred is sending you to hell just like lying and cheating will. Amen. Prejudice is of the devil. Racism is of the devil. It is God. Amen. There will be no such thing as second class citizens in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That, that foolishness going on down here. Amen. Because the devil is in the hearts of many folk. Amen. But I tell you, God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't show favoritism because of one's race. Amen. He doesn't favor one race above race. Amen. We're all the same in God's eyes. Amen. He created us all equal. Amen. Praise God. In spite of what's going on and what didn't happen, amen, throughout history, amen, God created us all equal. So not for one person to be better than the other. That's nothing but, amen, pride and arrogance, amen. That's of the average devil, Satan, because it's certainly not of the spirit of God, amen. Even so-called church, so-called Christians, amen, got that spirit in them, amen. I'm here to tell you, you're going straight to hell, amen. Praise God if you don't repent, amen, and get it right. Ask God to cast that demon spirit of hatred and everything else out of you. Amen. And fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. The spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, I tell you. Amen. It'll lead and guide you into all truth and righteousness. Amen. Not, no, not only will the Holy Ghost lead you into all truth, but it'll lead you into all righteousness. Amen. Teaching you and showing you how to live right. Amen. How to live holy. How to love the Lord with all your heart soul, mind, and strength, how to love your neighbor as yourself, amen, how to love the saints, how to love, love, love. amen, and that's what we want to talk about a little bit, if the Lord will, amen, praise God, love, because that's something, amen, that, of course, we see a, a great lack of in these last days, amen, even amongst so-called family members, amen, people are not loving one another, amen, as they should. Amen. Because of, amen, some grudge or something that someone did. Or say, amen. People are, are quick to turn on you. Amen. Cut you off. 
Amen. Even so-called church folk, even so-called Christians. Amen. That was a big problem over 2,000 years ago in the early church. And yes, it is still a big problem today. Amen. So-called saints hating one another. Amen. Bearing grudges. Amen. Won't speak to you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Won't answer your phone calls. Amen. Or if you try to meet them in person, they avoid you. Amen. Even so-called apostles. Amen. I've seen it firsthand. Yeah, so I'm not just making this up. I know. Amen. Who claim to be saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. And then supposedly been in the ministry for decades, but yet they're bearing grudges. Amen. Won't speak to people. There's people they haven't spoke to in years. Amen. But they claim to be full of the Spirit of God. You know, I find that hard to believe me. Amen. Because I know what the words say. Amen. The Bible says, forgive as Christ forgave. Amen. We have to learn to forgive one another. Amen. Now, we don't expect the world too much to do it. Amen. Unless they allow the Lord to deliver them. Amen. And break that yoke of, amen, hatred and everything and allow God to save them, amen, and break every other yoke in their life, amen, but those of us who have been born again of the water and of the spirit, amen, we have to love one another, amen, <clears throat> so turn with me if you will, we will be going uh, to the book of uh, First John, amen, so before we do, let's Amen. Start off with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we give you the praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us, oh, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving us one day. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, for bringing us out of darkness one day into your marvelous light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord God, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord God, we ask that you will have your way right now, oh God. We pray, Lord Jesus, we will bless, touch, and meet knees, and break yokes, oh God, in the hearts of men, men, women, boys, and girls, oh God, who needs a yoke broken in their life, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, Lord, and even among those who have, oh God, been born again, yes, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, you continue to sanctify them, Oh, God, and root out everything in them that needs to be rooted out. Oh, God, yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, for you are able. Yes, Lord God, because we all want to see your face in peace. Oh, God, and hear you tell us, well done, my good and faithful servants. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will help us to speak only as the oracles of God, doing nothing through strife or vain glory. And Lord God, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so praise God. We will, amen, go into, uh, I believe, 1 John, or the first epistle of St. John, chapter 3. So that's in the New Testament. Uh, that's kind of close, uh, right towards the end of the New Testament. Amen. So John chapter, or first John, rather, the first epistle of St. John. Amen. Chapter 3. And let's begin at verse 1. So first John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. And it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And keep in mind, this book here, it, it wasn't written to the world at large. Amen. Apostle John, amen, was primarily, primarily, amen, he was addressing those who have already been born again, amen, or the water and the spirit, who have already obeyed Acts 2.38, who repented of their sins, was baptized, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And now he's giving them instructions on what must they do. Amen. Along with encouragement. Amen. And exhortation. Amen. But giving them instructions as well on what must they do. Amen. To stay saved. Amen. 
<clears throat> to the end. Yes, indeed. So he says, Be, behold, what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Amen. So the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Father, of course, amen, because the scripture tells us, amen, if you can read John chapter 12, verses 44 to 45, Jesus said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, see of him that sent me. So, and we know in previous other verses, Jesus always talked about the Father sent him. The Father sent me to do this work. The Father sent me. So now in John chapter 12, verses 44 to 45, Jesus is confessing to be the Father. And he's also confessing that he sent himself into the world. Amen. Because who else can send God into the world but God himself? Amen. So it wasn't a second person or a third person as Trinitarians, amen, teach, amen, with that pagan doctrine that there are three gods in heaven, amen. That foolishness came from Europe, amen, from Rome, amen, from a very demonic, amen, satanic religion called Roman Catholicism. That has nothing to do with holiness, amen. So don't get me confused. Amen. With those devils. Amen. In that counterfeit Christian church. Amen. So there's only one God. And Jesus Christ is that one God. He is both Lord and God. Amen. Apostle Thomas even confessed that in John chapter 20, verse 28. Amen. After the Lord Jesus' resurrection. Amen. Apostle Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. He didn't say my Lord and the Son of God. He said my Lord and my God. He recognized Jesus as being both Lord and God because he is. Amen. And Jesus didn't correct him. He didn't say, oh, no, no, Thomas, you're wrong. I'm, I'm not God. I'm just, I'm just the Son. <clears throat> no, he said, well, Thomas, you, you believe because you see. Amen. But he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Yeah, but we still in 1 John, or the first epistle of St. John, <clears throat> chapter 3. He said, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. Or children of God. So that's what sons mean. So, you know, whether you're male or female, you know, you're being called a child of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Amen. And then let's also put emphasis on that. Amen. So hold your place here in John, 1 John chapter 3. And uh, let's go into, amen, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Or, you know, you can turn there with me if you like, but... I'm just going to bring out a point of who, who are the sons of God. Amen. Because it's, it's one thing to be born in the water of the spirit, but it's another thing to be led by the spirit of God. Amen. And not walking in the flesh because a person, some people, amen, they, they born again. You know, they obeyed Acts 2.38 or the, the initial, amen, steps of salvation, amen, repentance and baptism in Jesus' name, God filling them with the Holy Ghost. They Spoken other tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. Then later on down the line, they start amen, walking in the flesh, being carnal minded. Amen. So, you know, being a son of God, you you, you can't be walking on carnal minded and still be considered a, a son or a child of God. Not in God's sight. Amen. So that's why the emphasis here is in the book of Romans chapter 8. Amen. And we'll, it's really verse 14, but I just start at verse 13. And this book here was also written to the church at Rome, written to true believers at Rome. Amen. Not, not pagans that worship statues and call, amen, pedophiles that wear robes, holy father. No. Amen. Talking about true saints that have obeyed Acts 238. Amen. So this was over 2,000 years ago. Before that, counterfeit religion was even created. Amen. This was during the first century when Apostle Paul wrote this book to the Romans. Amen. So Romans chapter 8 and 
And of course, hey man, you can read the entire chapter and book on your own time. I just want to bring out a point. Beginning at verse 13, it says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. In other words, he's saying, if you're only just going to fulfill the, the lust of your flesh, amen, and be carnal minded and not, you know, look into the things of the Lord, amen, you're going to die. But if ye through the Spirit, amen, so in other words, through the Holy Ghost, amen, do mortify, and mortify means to put to death, do mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, ye shall live, in other words, not walking in the flesh, amen, denying yourself, that's why the Lord Jesus said, he that cometh after me, if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Amen. So if you want to follow Jesus, you have to first deny yourself. And you have to keep denying yourself. Amen. Even after the Lord saved you. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about denying yourself. Amen. Of evil. Amen. Denying yourself. Amen. Of sinning against the Lord. Amen. So that's why Apostle Paul said, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit, so through the Spirit of the Lord, do mortify, put to death the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Amen. And sometimes that, amen, you see your flesh rearing up, amen, that, that's time to fast and pray, amen. Sometimes, of course, you know, we have to pray always and not faint. That's what the Bible commands us. We should always be a praying people, but sometimes, amen, praise God, when you are trying to keep yourself mortified, you're going to have to drop the plate as well. Amen. Especially, amen, for some of our, amen, single brothers and sisters. Praise God. The flesh really be fighting you. Amen. I know because I was, I've been there. Amen. Single, amen, for over 10 years before the Lord blessed me with a wife. So, amen. I know how it is. Amen. Amen. Single in the church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Flesh get the ran up and Amen. Twitching and itching and all that. Praise the Lord, I tell you. Amen. That ain't the time to walk in the flesh. That's the time to fast and pray and cry out to the Lord. Amen. To keep the body under subjection. You, you got to, because cause when, when God saves us, amen, when the Lord fills us with the Holy Ghost, amen, I, he, our bodies are not uh, renewed. Amen. He doesn't give us a new body. We still got these same old bodies. Amen. That we used to use to drink and smoke and fornicate and everything else. Amen. Before the Lord delivered us. So what part of us is made new then? Amen. When God saves us. Amen. It's our mind. The spirit of our mind. Amen. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So that's the part of us that becomes new, our mind. Amen. Spirit of our mind, because now we're no longer alone. Amen. We have the spirit of the Lord Jesus inside of us now, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Once we have received it. Amen. And spoken other tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. Amen. You got to make sure you have the Holy Ghost, the real Holy Ghost. Amen. Not some shunder drives a hunder foolishness that these false prophets whispering in people here, amen, even so-called folk that are in Acts 238, amen, going with that foolishness, amen, that ain't the spirit of God, amen, you want the true Holy Ghost to fall on the inside, amen, but the true spirit of God is not going to fill you up until after you repented of your sins, amen, You after you renounce, amen, the hidden things of dishonesty and walking in craftiness, Amen. And living a wicked and deceitful life. You have to first repent of sins willingly. Amen. Make a commitment to turn away from everything that's against God's will. Amen. Against God's word. And I tell you, the Lord Jesus, he'll give you the power. Amen. He'll break the yoke for you. Amen. Praise God. But you have to want it gone. Amen. He said, Lord, I'm tired. Amen. I, I want to let all this go. Amen. The, the gossiping and talking mess and foolishness. Amen. With your friends. 
amen, talking about folk and gossip and amen, all kind of, amen, evil mess that some of us, amen, like to do. Amen. That's not a God that that is sending you to a burning hell, too. Amen. Just like, amen, cussing and amen, drinking and smoking will. Amen. Some people may not have a problem with drinking and smoking, but they like to talk about folk. Amen. Yeah, you need to ask the Lord to take that out of you, too. Amen. Because I serve, there ain't no one in heaven talking about folk. Amen. No. Amen. Them, them devils was cast out. Amen. Praise God a long time ago. Amen. So you have to repent of that, too. Amen. <clears throat> Yeah, so for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And then here we go, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So it's not just enough to, amen, obey Acts 2.38. Yeah, that's a blessing. Amen. Because I tell you, the devil will be fighting you. Amen. Doing that process. Amen. He followed all of us. Amen. Amen. We were seeking the Lord for repentance. Amen. Praise God for full deliverance. Amen. And then being baptized in water in Jesus Christ's name and letting God fill us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some of us had to tarry. Amen. For the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know I tarry. Once I realized I need the Holy Ghost, yeah, I Tarry for some months, amen. I uh, say a little over three months, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. And, and doing that tarrying time, I was fasting and praying, yeah. Going on three day, three night fast, amen. But I knew the Holy Ghost was real, amen. I wanted the real Holy Ghost, amen. Praise God. And one day the Lord filled me, amen. Hallelujah. Took control of my tongue. And that was, amen, April 26, 2005. Amen. That's almost 16 years ago. Praise God. <clears throat> yes, indeed. So the whole Spirit, I tell you, amen, it's a promise. So that promise is unto you, as Apostle Peter said, to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So, yes, amen, not only do you have to receive the Holy Ghost after you have repented and been baptized in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. But you have to go on and walk in the spirit. Amen. And keep the deeds of your body mortified or put to death. Amen. By the Holy Ghost. We see here Romans 8 chapter 8 verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So he didn't say for as many as amen obeyed Acts 238 and did nothing else. No, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we have to be spiritually minded. Amen. We praise God. We keep a good prayer life. Amen. And keep ourselves, ask the Lord, help us to be spiritually minded. Then, you, hey, amen. We'll have no problem. Amen. Resisting the devil. We'll have no problem. Amen. Being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. But it's only when we ain't doing enough watching, we ain't doing enough praying. Amen. Jesus said, amen, we're going to fall into temptation. Amen. So that goes for me, too. That goes for preachers as well. Amen. Praise God. We have to watch and pray. Amen. Otherwise, we're going to fall into temptation. So now we can go back to uh, 1 John chapter 3. It says, verse 2, be, be, <clears throat> first John chapter 3, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Amen. So in other words, he's saying we're being led by the Spirit of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he, speaking of the Lord Jesus, shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Amen. So when that time come, amen, when we all appear before, amen, the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to see him as he is, amen, in his pure form. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure, amen. We got to have this hope, amen, and hope until the end. <clears throat> in verse 4, whosoever committeth sin trans 
transgressive also the law. Amen. So yes, anyone who commits sin, they also transgression the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Amen. That's what sin is. Amen. You're going against, amen, the laws of God. Sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that it was manifested. So the Lord Jesus, he was manifested or revealed to take away our sins. So not to keep us in it. Amen. And say, well, I'm just doing the best I can. No. Amen. The Lord Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. In other words, deliver us. Amen. To make us free. Hallelujah. And in him is no sin. There is no sin in Jesus. Amen. As long as we walk in the spirit and being led of the spirit of God. Amen. For those of us who have been born again of the one of the spirit. Amen. There will be no sin in us either. Amen. Not saying that you were not going to make a mistake now and then, but amen, it should be intentional. Amen. And then if you do, amen, commit a fault, then you should be trying to get it right. Amen. Not, not letting the devil, amen, put, amen, thoughts and ideas in your mind. Well, you know, just do the best you can. Just don't wallow. It's all right to see old Jody every now and then, but just don't wallow. No. Amen. Praise God. You got that kind of mind. Amen. You didn't backslid. Amen. It's a difference between, amen, praise God, committing a fault. Amen. And just down backslide. Amen. Turning your back on God. Yeah. Many of us, amen, I'm sure. I know I have. I've made mistakes since I came into holiness. Amen. Wasn't intentional. Amen. <clears throat> And praise God, when we made our mistakes, amen, we got it right, amen, confessed them, and amen, if we, amen, committed an alt, amen, a fault against a brother or sister, amen, amen, repented, apologized, brother, I'm sorry, sister, I'm sorry, but you have to humble yourself, say, yeah, I was wrong, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have did that, amen, not, not justify what you did or, you know, Amen. Or when when someone try to correct you, you you get mad and cut them off. No, that ain't God's spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. We have to get it right. Then it says, uh, still in First John chapter three. Whosoever abideth in Him, so whosoever abideth in Jesus, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Amen. So whosoever, in other words, people that just, amen, continually, amen, habitually, amen, living a sinful life. Amen. Just an unregenerate person. Amen. They neither seen him nor known him. It don't, it doesn't matter if they, they can be Christians. Oh yeah, I go to church every Sunday. I'm on the choir. I'm on this board. I'm on this auxiliary. I'm on that auxiliary. But you know the type of lifestyle that this person is living. Amen. You know they're a liar. You know they sleep with everybody that they can. You, you know they do this and do that. You know they shake it up at the club. Amen. You know they just all out wicked. Amen. But they so-called go to God of religion and talk about Jesus sometimes. Amen. This says whosoever sinner, in other words, continually Amen. To sin on a continual basis. Have not seen them. So they have not seen Jesus. Not the Jesus of the Bible. They, they seen that, that other Jesus. Amen. Who's really the devil, Satan in disguise. Amen. But not the holy Jesus Christ in heaven. They seen him. Neither known him. Amen. So they don't know the real Jesus either. Amen. And then it says, verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. In other words, don't be misled. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Amen. So a person living a holy, righteous life, amen, they are righteous because they do right. Even as the Lord Jesus Christ is righteous. And it says, verse 8. 
he that commit of sin, in other words, continuing in sin or practicing sin, you know, they're sinner. That's what sinners do. They practice sin. Amen. They just won't stop sinning because it's in them. Amen. So he that commit of sin is of the devil. Amen. Even the ones who have some religion or claim to be Christians, they are of the devil. It could be your mother. It could be your father. It could be your grandma. Amen. It could be your brother, your sister. Amen. You see, all they do is sin. They talk about folk, cuss, lie, cheat, steal. Amen. Commit fornication, adultery. Amen. You know, not a not a good 20 minutes go by without them committing some sin against God. That's a sinner. And then Apostle John said, he that committeth. So that's the term practice. Amen. Practicing sin is of the devil. Amen. So they're not of God. Amen. And if they claim that they are, are of God, then you know the end to you. Amen. They just committing another sin. I am a child of God. And you see the type of life they live? No, they are not of God. They are of the devil. Amen. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Amen. So the devil, he continue, he practices sin way back in the beginning. Amen. He's been doing it a long time. And one that's serving the devil. Amen. That's all they doing. Amen. But you can praise God. <clears throat> Come out. Amen. Of his hands. Amen. You have to ask the Lord Jesus to save you. In other words, deliver you. Lord, deliver me or I'm going to perish. Amen. So he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth for this purpose. The son of God was manifested. Amen. In other words, God's words made flesh. Amen. Because John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the shine of in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then it goes on to say in verse 14, And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the Lord God Almighty became flesh, amen, through the man Christ Jesus. So that's the definition of the Son of God, amen. God made flesh, even as the prophet Isaiah prophesied, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shall, and he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us says the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the everlasting father mighty god hallelujah he didn't say son of god he said everlasting father there's only one father amen and that's god and then he says amen mighty god so jesus is that mighty god jesus is that everlasting father Amen. He is the Prince of Peace. Amen. <clears throat> For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So not destroy the works. Amen. And, and starting with you, starting with me. Amen. Destroying the works that we was into. Amen. Because people who practice sin, amen, they're practicing works of the devil. Amen. So the Lord Jesus came down, amen, and died on the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day, amen, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. He's able to destroy the works of the devil in your life. Amen. Whether you got a drinking problem, amen, a smoking problem, tobacco problem, drug problem, amen, pornography problem, amen, depression problem, 
Amen. Obsession problem. Whatever problem that you have or whatever work of the devil is in your life, God is able to take it out. Amen. Cast it out. Amen. Hallelujah. And truly, amen, set you free. Amen. Because Jesus said, whom the son has set free is free indeed. Amen. You want to be free from sin. Amen. That's what the true God of heaven does. He makes you free from sin. Not sit up and say, oh, well, just do the best you can. No. That's what the devil wants you to believe. Amen. That you you just going to be stuck. Amen. And that you have no other choice but to just deal with it. No. Amen. If you want to be free, Jesus will make you free. Amen. He'll break those jokes in your life. But you have to want them broken. You have to want it gone. Amen. You want you have to want or desire to be totally free from sin. Amen. There is no, amen, buffet style. Well, I, I want to repent of this. I want this to go because it's keeping me broke. But uh, I, I still like to uh, visit my boyfriend there once in a while. No, it don't work like that. Amen. You know, but some people, they got that kind of mindset. Well, I do want to let the drugs go because, yeah, it's it's hurting my pockets and, uh, you know, it's a family life. But uh, I, I still like to gamble. Uh, I don't want to give up gambling. Oh, I don't want to give up lying because, you know, when things, when I get in the jam, I, you know, I, I want to tell my lies so I can get out the jam. No. Amen. You have to give up. Amen. Repent of lying. Ban false witness against your neighbor as well as drugs. Amen. And, and other things. Amen. That the devil has you bound under. under. Amen. You have to let it all go. And you have to willingly let it all go. Amen. Is it all or none? Amen. Because the Lord Jesus is not going to share you with the devil. Amen. You have to surrender all to Jesus Christ. Amen. So. <clears throat> verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. In other words, does not practice sin. And if you're born of God, been born again of the water of the Spirit, obeyed Acts 2.38, amen, were baptized in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost fell on you, amen, you will not practice sin, amen, or continue in sin. For his seed remaineth in him, talking about the seed of God, amen, the Holy Ghost, and he cannot sin, or cannot practice sin because he is born of God. Amen. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. No, we're doing the opposite of what's right. Amen. So they're always doing wrong, doing the wrong thing. It's not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen. It goes for them too. It don't matter if you, you, amen, been baptized in Jesus' name, spoke in tongues. You got brothers and sisters in the church that you hate, that you're holding grudges against, amen, because of something they may have said, amen, five, ten years ago. You still refuse to speak to this person. You refuse to forgive them. Amen. You refuse to love them. Amen. Shut up your bowels of passion against them. And you really think you're going to see the Lord face in peace? You really think you're going to avoid a burning hell and you got that kind of mindset? Amen. I tell you, you must be, amen, totally the seed of the devil. The devil got you in darkness right now. Amen. Even out of the so-called Acts 238 church, and you're holding grudges against your brethren. Refuse to forgive. It says, in this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen. So he wasn't referring to the sinner. Amen. He referring to someone in the church. Amen. Hating their brothers. Hating their sisters. Amen. He compares them, amen, the same way he compares a sinner who never been converted. Amen. They are not of God. Amen. You need to repent. Amen. Because Jesus said, if you, for, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will 
your heavenly father forgive you yours. Amen. So Jesus is not going to forgive you of your trespasses. Amen. You call your forgiveness against someone else. Amen. Because you need forgiveness yourself. We need forgiveness ourselves. So, amen. We, we better be trying to forgive and, amen, overcome. Ask the Lord to help us. Amen. Not saying it's going to always be easy, but it, it, it has to be done if you want to be saved. Amen. If you want to be saved, you, you better forgive that person. Amen. For yourself. Not so much for them. Amen. For your own benefit. Amen. Because you want to be right with God. You want to be ready, amen, to see the Lord face to peace. You want to be saved. You don't want to be burning in hell over a grudge. Cast into the lake of fire on judgment day over a grudge. Amen. That you could have just let go and say, hey, well, you know, whether that person can or not, you know, amen, or whether they ever admit to, to being wrong or not, amen, I'm going to forgive them because I want to be saved. Amen. There's people I have forgiven. Amen. And I know to this day some of them, amen, you know, still uh, caring about like they ain't did no wrong. I know there's something wrong with their mind, but that's not going to stop me from, you know, forgiving them and moving on. Amen. Praise God. So I pray for them. Hey, uh, Lord, help me not to, to be like that. Amen. Be so blinded by the enemy. You you do a person wrong and you caring about like you ain't did nothing. No. Amen. Something wrong with that person. With people like that. But praise God for your own soul's sake. Amen. You need to forgive. Amen. Ask the Lord to help you. Amen. May even have to fast and pray. Amen. To get that strength from the Lord. Lord, I need to move on. Amen. Hallelujah. Help me to move on. Deliver me from all the pain and everything else that's associated with it. So I can forgive like you forgave, like you command me to. And move on in Jesus' name. And then it says, verse 11, 1 John chapter 3. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Amen. Because... Hold your place here. First John chapter three. What's that? First John chapter three, verse eleven. Amen. So this is Bible study. Amen. So, like the word of God says, line must be upon line. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Here a little. And there a little. <clears throat> Amen. So we're going to go in John or the gospel according to St. John chapter 13 so hold your place in amen 1 John 3 11 and let's go to the gospel according to St. John or the fourth book in the New Testament 13 and this is what Jesus said concerning love loving one another <clears throat> and we'll begin at verse 34 so John chapter 13 Begin at verse 34. Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. So he's saying, love one another, as I have loved you all. He said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this, so in other words, by us, you and I loving one another, amen, according to the scriptures, amen, being there for one another, amen, helping each other out when we see, amen, a brother and sister, amen, praise God, doing whatever we can to help one another out like family does, amen, you see someone struggling and you're able to help them, amen, you're supposed to help them, not just see them, amen, struggling and be like, oh, well, they'll be all right, no, Amen. Lord, put it on your heart to help. Amen. That's what family does. Amen. We're supposed to be the family of God. Amen. And an example for the world. It says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, 
as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that by doing that, all men, not some, all. Amen. Everybody. Amen. The, the Hindus, the Buddhists. Amen. All. Amen. Men that's in all kind of different religions. Some that seem to be atheists and agnostic. All of them going to know. He said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, that you are followers of Jesus Christ. If ye have love one to another. He didn't say, amen, by, by uh, uh, so-called apostles going about, amen, impersonating the voice of bishops, amen, and preaching styles, amen. He didn't say, hey, they're going to know you, my disciple, by doing that, amen. Anybody can be a voice impersonator, and amen. I ain't mentioning no names, but amen, you all know who I'm talking about, amen. No, that's not proof that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. See people like that, and they don't got no love in their heart. Amen. <clears throat> and you can tell the kind of spirit that's in them. Amen. Is that of strife and hatred. Amen. You don't see no love at all. No love of God. Amen. So it didn't say by having a, a large organization. Amen. A 501c3 that you just started up or that you're a part of. Amen. Shall all men know that you're my disciples? No. He said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. Amen. So that's the proof that people will see that we are truly following the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the scriptures, and they go, no, they ain't going to guess, say, man, I know they are following Jesus Christ. Look how they loving one another. Look how they, they looking out for each other. Look how they care one another. Amen. Look how when one falls, another one pick them up. Pick them up. Look, look how when, when one is struggling, uh, another one steps up to help them out. Amen. They have to be following Jesus Christ. Not following Buddha, not following Allah, not following some other false god, but they're following the God of heaven, the only one that exists. That's the proof that people will see and know that you are, that we are followers of Jesus Christ if we have love one to another. Amen. It starts with that. Amen. Not with, amen, title and talk of these so-called apostles that we see. Amen. Don't have no power of God to heal the sick, no power of God to raise the dead, no power of God to do any of the works that the true apostles in the Holy Spirit accomplished, but yet they got a title in their mouth. It takes more than a title in your mouth to prove that you are a true apostle of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is not your calling. Amen. Just seek God and, and, and ask God what your true calling is. You, you may be a pastor or an evangelist or a teacher. Amen. But apostle is not it because you're not doing what the other apostles did. God is no respect of persons. So he's not going to give, amen, modern apostles less power, amen, less anointing than the original apostles amen, that he gave in the Holy Scriptures when he first established the church, amen, he gonna give them the same power, the same anointing, amen, he gonna work with them the same way. Oh, praise God, I tell you the truth will make you free. Hallelujah, God, for the truth. Amen, it will make you free. Amen, so we back in 1 John, or the first epistle of St. John, chapter 3, amen, and I believe we stopped at verse 11. Um, let's see. Well, we'll just read verse 10 again. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Amen. And we just read that in John chapter 13, verse 35. That's the only proof, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that people would see and know that we are true followers of the Lord Jesus. And then he says here, and this is the same writer, Apostle John, he wrote this epistle and he also wrote, amen, the gospel, the gospel according to St. John, same apostle. Not as Cain, verse 12, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother, amen. So Cain was of the devil, amen, killed his brother. No, we ain't supposed to hate and kill each other. Amen. And then it says, And wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. And then it says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Amen. From being dead in sin. Amen. To now being alive unto God. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Unto righteousness. Because we love brethren. We love the saints. Amen. He that loveth not his brother. Abideth in death. Oh but I speak in tongues. Blah blah blah. Rolling on flow. Yeah but you hate your brother. You hate your sister. Amen. You are abiding in death. Not abiding in the Holy Ghost. Abiding in and death on your way to hell in the lake of fire if you don't get it right right out the acts 238 church then it says whosoever verse 15 first john chapter 3 verse 15 whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer amen you hate your brother and sister in the church you a murderer amen you've got that same spirit of a murderer in your mind and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he, speaking of God, God laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. <clears throat> and then here we go. And this is another example of someone who has so much hatred and bitterness and a strife and grudging in their heart against their brother and sister, this, this is some of them do. And I've seen it happen too. But whoso hath this world's good and see of his brother have need and shut up, up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Amen. You see your brother and sister have need? Amen. But you got some hatred in your heart for him that you shut up your bowels of compassion against him? Amen. Refuse to help him? Refuse to lend a helping hand? Say, how dwell of the love of God in you? There's no way you have the love of God in you. Amen. You have a phony baloney spirit, but not the love of God. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Amen. We give God the praise. So that's amen with the Lord pulling out. Amen. To touch on the light. <clears throat> amen. Having love one to another. Amen. We have to truly love one another. Amen. Amen. That that's one of the things. Amen. When it comes, one of the one of the beginning principles. Amen. To love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. And to love one another. Amen. Because really. If you think about it, amen, the whole scriptures, it gives instructions on how to love God and how to love our neighbors ourselves. Amen. Because on that, Jesus said, it hangs all law and the prophets. If you love the Lord and you love your neighbor as yourself, and on that, it hangs all the word of God, all the instructions, because that's all the commandments and instructions is about, amen, instructing us on how to love the Lord and how to love our neighbors ourselves, amen, step by step, amen, but that's what it's all about, amen, so you can give, amen, you can give me a call, amen, after the broadcast, amen, or email or text message, whichever you prefer, amen, my number is 832-360-5812. Once again, that is area code 
one two. My email address is Apostolic Minister at att.net. Once again, Apostolic Minister at att.net. Amen. Our address or website address is a h c j c dot com. That is a h c j c dot com. Amen. And you can also find the information, amen, on our Facebook page, uh, YouTube channel, amen, and our web address as well. So, amen. <clears throat> so, but yes, if you have any questions, amen, prayer requests, amen, uh, of course, you can go on our website. It probably will answer that question before you even ask, but amen, what you don't see on the website, you can, amen, give me a call and amen, and by the Lord's grace, I answer, amen. If I don't discern it being a foolish and unlearned question, because the Bible tells me to avoid that. Avoid foolish and unlearned questions, amen, for they do gender strife. So, you know, if you call them with the foolishness, then no, I'm, I'm going to avoid that, because that's that's what, amen, Apostle Paul, amen, teach in the, amen, in the epistles. Amen. Because I never see that goes well when, you know, brothers, they try to answer every question. And a lot of times people be asking foolish questions. And they're not asking for a good intent. They just want to, amen, really, in a sense, waste your time. Amen, because the devil is using them. Yeah. So, no, nah, I'm not going to answer foolish and unlearned questions by the grace of God. But sincere, amen, you want to know more about truth, amen, we will impart unto you as the Lord give us. Amen. So, until our next broadcast, amen, if it be the will of the Lord, may the Lord bless and keep you all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. God bless you all.